today, a follow-up on our recent podcast, Does God Actually Speak to Us Anymore? Uh, we talk all around that issue and Andrew cries. Welcome to the To Be The Church podcast, where we explore what it looks like to truly be the church in today's culture. Ben, <laughs> you texted us a video the other day, and I yeah. can't, I couldn't get past it. I was watching it at my daughter's softball game, uh-huh. uh, which is when you sent it to me, and like a guy next to me was like, what is that? <laughs> and so I had to show him and uh, I was like, one of my pastor buddies sent this to me. Um, so let's just check it out. It's uh, oh, set, a setting up the stage. Oh my gosh. Um, this is a, um, a pastor who it looks like he's doing like a prayer of commissioning for like a new church planter or a missionary or somebody who's getting sent out. Well, my uh, caption was one day when we send Max out to plant a church, <laughs> this is going to be my prayer. Okay. <laughs> All right. So check out this video. Uh, Not just as a pastor, but I stand here uh, as an apostolic leader, having planted churches all over the world with the fruit of my life being shown across nations and across generations. And so my hands today are not light. My hands today are not the hands of a novice. They're not the hands of a beginner. They're not the hands of one who's just trying to lead and trying to figure it out. But a proven Lord through a life of seasoned leadership, my hands are faithful. And so I take these faith. Uh, not- <laughs> All right, dude. Yes, I Lord. can't tell you how many times like I've told people on staff here like these are not the hands of a novice <laughs> <laughs> in the last two weeks. That's a creepy thing to say. <laughs> Cody, Cody rolled his eyes at that. <laughs> Said uh, a few times. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. F- first question: Where did you find this? And Ben has a. This is one of his spiritual gifts. <laughs> it's fine. Finding crap, crap on online. <laughs> I think it was on Instagram, yeah. uh, like from a funny page, or yeah, like oh, okay. there's a like a Christian satire page. Okay, yeah. um, and it was so <laughs> unbelievable that I had to share it. Uh, yeah, there's a lot yeah. that could be said about that, but <laughs> it's just the most. Not even a humble brag, but just like the yeah. guys. It's fle- in it's in a prayer. He's right? flexing the, hard. The <laughs> lack of self awareness is just mind boggling. Yeah. It's it, to me what made me like my ultimate thought on it. And it was like, here is someone who is extremely insecure. Yeah. I mean, to be, to have to like, I think that's the case with people who are very proud. And obviously we all have pride in our hearts is it's covering up insecurity. Like, why does he have to like lay out his whole resume? <laughs> He's sending out these people. But it's like, I just want everyone to know these hands aren't light through seasoned faithful leadership, Lord. Uh, it just it kept going that's the thing it's like it's like if it, if it, if he had said one thing well it wouldn't be on the satire side but it's like there kept being qualification upon qualification upon qualification it was like there wasn't just like the top line of the resume read it was like he read the whole body of accomplishments or something ish you know but it's like all around the world and da, 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 and then it just kept going and i just can't picture any <laughs> pastors i know who would pray it like that's so cringy I don't know. And I'm not saying I'm, I'm not, I'm above, I don't know. I'm not trying to be like just a, a critic or a cynic, but man, that was just wild. And like, I like how everyone who's being prayed over is like, yes, Lord. <laughs> yes, Lord. Mm-hmm. Yes. Like, it's you know, like, what's the goal there? You know, know. Is the goal just to be like this prayer? He's about to lay is, his hands and these are not like, not the hands of a novice. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what else there is to say about it, but well, no, well, I had a, so have you ever, um, have you ever been in a room where something like that's happened? The cringy, that like, level that, of like cringe? that level of like lack of self awareness cringe. I did grow up Pentecostal because mm. I have one. All right, I would love to got? hear it. All right. So my friend, his name is Alex and he, he got married and he decided, and this was a mistake to get married on his parents' anniversary. And his dad was the preacher doing the wedding. And, uh, this might be an exaggeration, but I don't think it is. I was a groomsman in the wedding, so I was like standing there on the stage. The wedding opens, the bride has just walked down the aisle, and the first 10 minutes is the preacher talking about his wife. So oh. like his son's mom and like the future mother-in-law of the lady who's like standing there with the flowers in her hand getting okay. married. He brings her up and gives her flowers. Like, and uh, I was talking to somebody about this recently that was there, and they were like, wasn't the flowers like the same bouquet that the, bride had like the exact same bouquet oh, wow. and i was like that was a thing and i was like i don't remember that um but like and again maybe an exaggeration but 10 minutes like of like talking about his wife and in the thing in the um in the context of like alex and his wife your life needs to look 
like ours does. So Alex was the son? Yep, getting and, married, and his dad was preaching the sermon, ooh, or the wedding. So the bride was the daughter-in-law. Yep. Uh, I wonder and, how that relationship is. And the whole thing. the mother-in-law. On, on Facebook, it looks great. I don't know. But yeah, they look at the... They, I still How follow. many years ago is this? Oh, 15 probably. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But like... Could you stir that pot a little and find out if there's anything, <laughs> any issues going on there? If that... Just because, um, you know, I have four daughters. And yeah, yeah. But I mean... Although I would be the dad of the daughter, so... Yeah, it was different. legitimately though, like, you, your marriage needs to look like ours. Oh, yeah. Like, and here are the ways. And here's the ways our marriage is awesome. And uh, like, like and it was yeah. like fruit of our marriage. And so, but... Well, the kids standing once. there literally is fruit of their marriage. <laughs> <laughs> literally. Uh, but... Fast forward 10 minutes into the ceremony, 10 more minutes in the ceremony, the things are going on. And one of the bridesmaids had been not feeling great and she collapsed, like oh. all standing there. And it was at a hotel ballroom, like the wedding was. And she fell off of the, the, um, the, the removable staging and hit her head. Ooh. And so she got knocked out completely. And like, it was like the wedding stopped. Like they brought a chair for the bride to sit in, like, cause it was like taking a while. EMS came in. Um, got this bridesmaid. She wakes up in the middle of being tended to, realizes what's going on, and just screams the words, I'm so sorry, over and over as she's being wheeled down the middle aisle, like <laughs> on the gurney. Um, You've told me that story yeah, yeah, before. Dude. And so, like, but, I'm so sorry. <laughs> but it was after dad did like the long sermon about his oh, wife. My gosh. And so, um, at, after after the wedding at the reception, I went up to the dad. And I've known this guy my, pretty much my whole life. And I was like, hey, maybe if you didn't talk about yourself so much, maybe she wouldn't have, uh, <laughs> you know, she would have had time to like get through the wedding and not fall over. And he said something very mean to me and walked away. Um, but uh, yeah, that was that was the, yeah. the, the story that came to my mind. In fact, my dad was at that same softball game when that video got sent to me by you. And I was like, do you remember that wedding? He's like, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't even have to tell him who it was. Uh, that's uh, good. That's good, yeah. man. I love it. Yeah. All right. So let's jump into a question. Thanks, um, man. We, we had an, yeah, I appreciate that. Um, anytime it's a, it's a bin text message to a group, it's yeah. either going to be like the opportunity to play golf yeah. <laughs> or something really funny, yeah. you know, um, usually the same or around. the, or like an invite over to sit around a fire. Or mm. in the garage, but I never get those. But yeah, <laughs> regardless, you guys want to talk about it, um, dude? I lost your number. Uh. <laughs> okay, so we had, we had an episode a few weeks back, um, a- answering a question as to whether or not God speaks to us. Like, what do we do when someone says God told me blank? Um, how, how should we respond? What should we think about? And kind of the overall thought was be very cynical of said thing unless it's scripture, like unless it's from scripture. And so here's a question that came in from a listener, and this is a, a lot of question here. Um, I, I'm going to kind of go through a few things. So get some popcorn and listen to this one. Here we go. I totally understand that we should be cynical and employ a critical lens when we hear someone say, God said this to me or God told me that. I agree that we should generally avoid attributing things to him that are not from him or attributing things to him that we do not know are from him, Proverbs 30. I agree that thoughts and phrases like those have been abused throughout history, but kind of what we said last episode. I feel like the conversation uh, of last podcast really got caught up in the semantics of, quote, God told me, or, quote, God said this. The real question at hand is whether or not God speaks to us or not. There seems to be some agreement among you about the using of the term prompting. You came to a consensus that God could speak audi- could speak audibly to us, though he doesn't often, to the point that none of you have ever experienced audibly hearing his voice. I feel like the more important question is not whether God, quote, speaks to us, but whether or not he, quote, communicates with us. We're dancing around the word speaks, because of humanity's penchant for abusing God's word or his speaking. We're chastising the phrase God said, but then you're okay with God prompted. In the church, we'll often say things like Jesus is my personal Lord and Savior, or I have a personal relationship with Jesus. We characterize ourselves as having a relationship with God and describe it as personal in nature. There's not one person with whom I have a relationship with whom that I don't also communicate or with who I don't also communicate with. If we don't relate to each other, I think it's hard, maybe impossible, to have a relationship with someone. Personal communication is a defining characteristic of an intimate relationship. Initiation and response, response to response and rapport uh, builds and relationship grows and deepens. There's all kind of references in the Bible to people crying out to God and God answering. What do we make of Job 38 through 42? He clearly spoke. Um, It's in scripture. Yet God's voice is not described as audible. God didn't just prompt a response from Job or Eliphaz. He spoke to them. God spoke to Noah, Genesis 9. In the church today, we often describe our relationship with Jesus as personal. Um, 
We say we can talk to him. I didn't understand that as a kid, but I'm starting to understand it as an adult. Um, over the course of my life, as I've heard older, wiser, see, seasoned uh, Christians mo- describe their relationship with the Lord, I've often heard that they just talk to God throughout the day. No formal folded hands, eyes closed down on your knees praying. Uh, prayers, just a simpler abiding with him type relationship where they might just make little comments to him throughout the day. Um, my question is, how do I describe things in an accurate, responsible way in which I'm giving him enough credit and glory without at the same time saying how I feel like he's guided me um, through really bad circumstances? I mean, he's leading us, right, through the hard times. Um, he gave us the Holy Spirit to guide us and comfort it, comfort us. So where do you draw the line? What a great question. What a great question. I made notes because, it, you know, it's a longer question as you're, as you're writing or talking there. Um, and ultimately... Am I right that that final kind of question there to the question was, how do I talk about, you know, like communication with God in a responsible way, right? Yeah, yeah. How how do I describe it in an accurate, responsible way, which I'm giving God enough glory and credit without at the same time uh, saying, uh, without at the same time saying how I feel like he's guiding me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's good. Yeah, and I I, am, ever since we started doing this podcast, which what, Tyler, is now five years-ish? Six? Over seven. Over seven. Yeah, I had a Facebook memory that we were asking for questions for this podcast seven years ago recently. Wow. Back then we didn't get a lot of questions. Cody, how many episodes do we have? 350 something. 350 something. That's a weekly. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Um, Yeah, so ever since we started this podcast, though, I've made it a habit just to, I'm subscribed to it, and... um, and I, um, I listen to every one of them. I think I've listened to every To Be The Church podcast. Uh, j- just to, I don't know. It, it's like, they're not long and I, you know, well, the people who are hearing me right now are listening. So you understand why I listen, listener? No. I listen because I, I want to I wanna think, because we, like you said recently, Ben, like we come in here not sure what we're going to talk about and then we just kind of give responses and we um, talk out of our ears. Um, like, or out of our butts, as we've said before. Um, I, I always want to like kind of check, like, okay, how, how do we say that? And then it gets me thinking on other things. And listening to the episode where we did talk about that kind of stuff, I, you know, and I think we said the things about like a limiting principle and understanding and the way it's been abused. And the question asker said all that. But is it just semantics? Like, I'll look to you, Ben, on that first of all. Like, is it just semantics? Like, what is the difference between saying, you know, I think we said in that episode, like a sense, like you get a sense or the prompting or those kind of things. And so what's the difference between saying a prompting versus saying God said? Is it just semantics? Well, I think when I would, if if I'm saying God spoke to me or God told me, I guess I'm assuming in, uh, you're hearing something audible or it's a, the voice of God. Um. But when people that, and most people who use that phrase don't say it, that don't mean that. They okay. mean like a, an inner sense. They mean like that in their mind, they, they got a sense that of something. But do you see a difference? Is it just semantics, I guess? Would you think that that's just a semantics issue or, or is there more there? I guess I just approach it with, uh, um, I don't know, I want to be careful because there's not a flaw in anything God would lead me in. Obviously there's no flaw in him, but there is a flaw in me. And so I'm, I'm careful like that, not that he would be unclear, but that I wouldn't understand. Um, or I would think he's telling me something or prompting me to something that I don't know that I'm misinterpreting or I it's, I'm basing too much on feelings or I don't know. I, I think, and I think I think this is what you've always said too is like um, we need to be careful with that kind of language. Not only because it's been abused a lot, but also because I think as human beings we're still with indwelling sin, and we are prone to misinterpret things or think God is telling us something that He's not. The thing I, I think I would um, respond to the question asker with is just like I think separating what God is doing, whether we call it prompting leading, guiding, separating that from his authoritative word, I think is where the problem is. Okay. Like, I don't think anytime I sense that God is leading me or prompting me or telling me something, I guess, to me, it's always connected by something he's already said in his word that Mm. I know is true. It's, it's never going to contradict it. If it is, I know it's definitely not from him. 
but it's the spirit bringing to mind a promise from yeah. scripture or a truth of the gospel or a command I'm supposed to obey. And so those two things are intertwined. And so I, I would just say, I think the right posture is as God sent or as God prompts us, leads us is to make sure we're, we're discerning that with our Bibles open. And, um, I also don't think a lot of times when people wouldn't use this language of God told me it's, um, it's often like new revelation or, um, I don't know that people long for that because they need that as if the sufficiency of scripture is not something mm. we, we hold to like we've been given everything we need for life and godliness. Mm. And so like, I don't know if God gives us a new word. I think he applies the word to us and, and empowers us to live out this salvation as we work it out as he's working in us. And, um, so again, it's nuance. If someone would say God told me, and then we started to unpack that, and they felt like the, you know there was some scripture that the Spirit was bringing to mind and using to empower them, like sure, if that's what they mean, yeah, sure, sure. I guess my experience is most people when they say God told me, that's not what they mean. It's I have this yeah. I, I have this idea that God told me to, um, God told me to marry this person. Um, I agree with Kevin DeYoung in his little book. Uh, um, just do something that like, I don't think God often reveals his will of direction. Yeah. I think he's revealed his moral will. His will of decree is what he wills from eternity past. I don't think God always reveals to us. Here's what I want you to do in every situation. We are to honor God, to live, to glorify God and, and then make choices yeah. um, that obviously he's sovereign over, but I don't think, um, I think the question asked for bringing up Noah, bringing up Job, like, again, I don't know if those are prescriptive. I think surely God has done this, but even if you take all the instances in the Bible where God spoke to people audibly, um, that's still, isn't that still a super minor percentage of human beings, uh, mm. of God's people throughout human history? Sure, so sure. it's like, uh, you know, I don't know if it, all those are to show us that this is how God is always going to interact uh, with his people. Yeah. So, and I, the phrase in the Old Testament in Hebrew, it's Vayomer Elohim and God said, and it's in the Old Testament. I mean, it's in Genesis 1 like 20 times. And and there's a lot of debate about what Vayomer Elohim means in the sense of everybody knows it means and God said, but what, how did God say? So did he speak? I mean, we, we, do see in scripture at times there is an audible voice from heaven. Um, but how did God say this? You know, the tabernacle instructions in Exodus, like, and God said this, and God said this, and God said that, like, was, there's probably a lot in the context to think that God was speaking audibly with Moses in many instances, but like what, so, so when God, you know, kind of um, says all that in Job 38 and, and answers Job, like, as I read Job 38, 39, 40, it, it, I would not be surprised if there was an, if that was an audible thing. Um, those who are hardcore cessationists, um, um, think that Vayomer Elohim is always audible, that, that every instance in the old Testament where it said, and God said that it was an audible voice to the prophets, to Moses, to whoever, because it's like that, that's just, and what they're doing there is they're establishing a limiting principle that is like God spoke this way in those times and now you know it's it's not that same that same era or whatever i i don't know if i would go that far necessarily i do see some that there has to, i think we do need to maintain a level and you mentioned the prescriptive descriptive thing but can i say it this way maybe like we do need to maintain a level of discontinuity in our own understanding of our hearing from god with the apostles and prophets that were inspired to write the 66 books of the Bible. Like, I do think we need to understand that we're sinners just like them and all these other things, but there's a level of authority there in their hearing from God and in their being um, carried along by the Spirit, right? First, uh, Second Peter 1, we just looked at that text over here in our Second Peter series. Like, the way that God worked in them and through them to write his revealed word um, is is. There's a, there's a level of, and I don't want to go too far with that because I'm not, I'm not 
you know, there's a level of discontinuity though, in terms of like, well, they heard that that way. And so we now hear that way. Right. And so it's not just that a lot of that stuff is descriptive and it, and not necessarily saying that we should expect that same thing, but it is also to understand that, like, I mean, just frankly, there's a, there, there's a level of, of, of discontinuity there that we can't claim that level of authority. And if we could, we'd be ascribing more to Mormon theology than we would to Christian theology, I, th- I think. So, um, so, so I think that that's, I think that's important, but, but I, I would go, uh, Tyler, I want to pivot to you too, because you, you grew up like me mm-hmm. in that more Pentecostal type world. And like, what's the, um, I, I think all three of us would, would hold, like God speaks to us for sure. You know, that God, that God um, communicates with us that, that um, we, it speaks to us in the sense of like his spirit. I mean, Romans eight, it bears witness with our spirit. We are God's children. Um, there's, I mean, I was reading Ephesians four, in my devotions this morning, um, that it is talking to Christians that you have heard him, right. That you have heard Christ, you know, and Romans 10 also talks about that, um, that, you know, Christ speaks to us, uh, calls us to himself, and these things. So, so yes, God speaks, but like what, um, outside of the audible voice, um, maybe, maybe in, in your experience throughout your life, and I'm not asking for like instances of like, when has he spoken to you? I'm more asking for like what your thought is on how you would explain maybe to somebody who doesn't know anything about the faith, doesn't have a Pentecostal background or a, this background or whatever, but just like, they'd be like, wait, God talks to you or, or what mm-hmm. you, so how would, how would that, how would you um, articulate that in your Tyler type way? Yeah, maybe do good, it in okay. song if you want to. No, that's okay. Um, yeah, that's a good question. I don't, I don't, I'm not sure. I think, um, I think that as we as Christians hide his word in our heart, the spirit illuminates his word that we've already hidden in, in our hearts. Mm. Like, and I think we may have even talked about that last time. I don't know. Um, but it's like the ways that I've seen that play out in a healthy way is I'm disbelieving some truth. Like I'm, I'm not like either that my sin isn't forgiven or that, um, you know, whatever that might be. And like the spirit is illuminating the truth of the gospel to me in that moment, whether it be through just bringing it to mind or through another Christian who is hiding that word in their heart that they bring it up. Um, you know, and I think, uh, to go a little broader, two words that keep coming to mind in this conversation are, um, assurance and humility in two different ways. Mm. Um, assurance, like there seems to be an assurance when somebody says, God told me, that it's like, this was God, no matter what, like there's an assurance there that I'm uncomfortable with. <laughs> like, yeah. um, unless it was like, dude, God told me for God so loved the world. He gave his only son. It's like, <laughs> well, yeah, God told you that because you, you know, you hid. He told all of us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but then on the other side of humility, where there have been times where people have been like, Hey, I don't know what's going on here. Like, I feel like this might be God saying this and I, I want to bring it to you because, you know, um, and like in my opinion, experience like those are the times where it's actually like oh that was actually spot on versus like god told me this and this is exactly what god said yeah and then it's like what like that's just you know why like you know yeah yeah and uh kind of what you back to what you said ben is like that it's not that you disbelieve like or distrust god it's that you distrust yourself and like your ability to hear and there's that like that assurance in a lot of folks that make those statements um and uh <clears throat> yeah, I I think that that happens more often than not, and and honestly, like it it just very much in so many circumstances. It's like what God said lines up with what you want Him to say, sure, um, or what like I want to get a meeting with this person, so I'm going to say God told me to meet with you, or I'm going to you know what like what like um, yeah, I or think, or le- or a level of and we saw this a lot in the in the Pentecostal world, a level of like this is going to add some authority to what I want to do mm. or to what I want other people to do that I can't get from the scriptures. And so I'm going to use the Trump card of like, I like God saying this, you know, and that those are in the most like, mm-hmm. but, but I mean, those are pretty commonplace in the world that I grew up in. And that's what makes me very um, wary of that, I think. And, um, something that came to mind is first Thessalonians five, Dude, do not quench this. You got it. Yeah. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophecies, but test everything. Hold fast, to what is good, abstain from every form of evil. And um, 
this so I, I this text is not talking about prophecies in the sense of like God's authoritative word because that's not it, it's it's talking about it in the sense of like what we're talking about like those those things that are said um, to people uh, maybe in not knowing what language is being used in that context but God told me or this or I sense this or a prompting or a sense or whatever. Um, but, but as we hear these things, we test everything, hold fast to what is good, um, and, or hold fast what is good and abstain from every form of evil. And I, and I think that that's, that's really vital. And I, I remember hearing a, uh, uh, remember that old podcast? He probably still does it. Ask Pastor John, John Piper. Oh, yeah. I love that podcast back in there. And, and, um, he I heard, does it. Yeah. I heard him talk about this one time on that. And, and he was saying that like, what was going on in Thessalonica? We don't know. But apparently there's like something with prophecies with people, you know, presuming to speak for on behalf of God or thus says God or whatever to somebody that made people despise that, (laughs) that, and maybe made them swing the pendulum too far in the way of like, like not, not being able to, uh, not, you know, despising it, hating it. That's a very strong word in the original language, like hatred, like a deep hatred for it. And to the level where it was quenching the spirit. Right. So, so yeah, we don't know the every circumstance of what that is, but it, it, it does give us that you use two words, humility, Tyler. And what was another other one? Uh, assurance. assurance. Yeah. That, that we got to think through those things about, about how, how we're communicating that and, and just being, and that's why I love the question from the question asker. He says, you know, how do I talk about this in a responsible way? It's an awesome, awesome, um, awesome deal. And I got, I got one or f- two more things, but Ben, what, what were you going to say for Thessalonians? I was, and I think just the question from that passage is, so how do you test everything? Yeah. Well, where's the standard? Well, it would be God's authoritative word already spoken through the prophets and apostles. So that's what, that's, I think, the sum of what I'm saying is just test everything. I do think God, again, I like the word prompting. Um, you see that in Second Thess- Semantics. Second Second Thessalonians <laughs> one talks about everything your faith prompts you to do. That God is working in you Proof that way. Text. For sure. Um, but God prompts me all the time. I think to like to send encouragement to people. Yeah. Um, but if I was to like uh send you a message like Andrew, I just want you to know from the Lord that um you're perfect. You um you got this in your own power. You can do this. Like you don't need any help. You like, you should test that. And you'd be like, wait a second. Like God says like, when my weakness, I'm strong and like, I need the Lord. And, and so, but if a friend does that and it's in line with the truths of scripture, in my opinion, that's the, that's the prophetic gift in the new covenant. Mm. Um, it's, it's not authoritative like the old Testament prophets. Sure. Um, where, you know, he, he says, he doesn't say about Old Testament prophets ever like, you are to test them, but he's not like, hold on to what's good, throw out the, you know, throw out the bones, keep yeah, the yeah, meat. Yeah. It's like, but with this New Testament prophecy, there is a sense when it's like, you need to like realize that it could be fallible. It's mm. not, um, it, it, the the stuff that's really of the Lord's going to come through as you test it against scripture. So that's good. Yeah, I would just say that w- that's what we should do with all this. If anyone ever says God told me, God prompted me, God, I sense that God's saying whatever just test it against scripture. Yeah. And so I think to, to button it up the, um, I really, I, I love also what the question said about personal relational. There's initiation and response, communication, talk, uh, uh, people that have walked with the Lord for a long time, like talking to him throughout the day, I, that, like pray always. Uh, yeah. I would not hesitate to say that's great. I, I don't, they're not when people are, you know, you're driving in your car and you're, and you're, or you're, by yourself walking along or whatever, and you're speaking even out loud to the Lord, he hears you like this is prayer. That's what prayer is. And so I would really encourage that and, and not, not want to limit that in any way um, in terms of one's kind of um, meditating on the, on the scriptures, but also in one's actual, you know, seeking, calling out to God in prayer. The word beseeching is coming to mind for some reason, though I don't say that word often. Um, but I, I kind of got from the question asker though, the implication that God's doing that back. It's just like a conversation it, it, yeah. throughout the day. And I would say we read his word sure, and he speaks to us through his word and then we speak back to him in prayer. Yeah. And, and I think what Tyler was saying is a good, is a good thing in that subject because the more we're hiding God's word in our heart, the more, the more it, it, um, those things, Tyler, I just love the way you said that about like when you're, you're tempted to believe something that's not 
you know, of the Lord or, or, or whatever else. And that, that word will come back to you. And, and that's the way I would kind of button it up would be that it's so funny that we had this question today because just this morning I was, um, it was, so I'm, I'm, I'm sitting there and I, I woke up, uh, and I had a few hours before anybody else in the house woke up and I was like, you know, I was reading Ephesians for devotions and then I was journaling and everything. And I was just like, I don't know, there was some kind of stuff that I was thinking through at a, at a point where I was just kind of discouraged or, or, um, you know, uh, I wouldn't say fearful, but more kind of discouraged on, on stuff related to, um, uh, related to, uh, again, not on a personal level, but related to kind of provision, you know, as it relates to the church or vision going forward or different kinds of things that we're, that we're uh, doing at NGC and, 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 you know, uh, a little bit discouraged and not because of anything going on, but just of, of like where things go or, or whatever else. And, um, and I'm, I'm there and I'm at the sink and I'm looking out the window and I wasn't even thinking like, oh, I'm discouraged, you know, <laughs> but there was just kind of this level of this thread of kind of maybe fear or discouragement or whatever that was in my mind. Um, and I'm looking out the window and there's, and, and our back deck is there and there's this little, like this beautiful little bird. I mean, like crazy, like, like HD, like, like, like the colors on this thing were unbelievable. And it just comes in there and my wife's got this blueberry plant right there that the birds are always trying to pick berries off of. And it comes in there, it lands right next to it. And I mean, it was just, and so the thing's like, it's out the kitchen window, but it's like maybe six feet away from where I'm standing at the sink. And I see that bird and it's like, boom, Matthew six twenty six came to mind, right? Like right away. And, and in that moment, um, it, which again is a scripture that's familiar, but Matthew six twenty six, um, look at the birds of the air and they neither sow nor get, nor reap nor gather in the barns. And yet your heavenly father feeds them. The dude, so it comes to mind and I'm like, I'm like, oh man, that's awesome. And, but then I was like, I need to, I need to look at that text. I need to read that text right now because the, it came to mind. I preached the text. I know the text and I look at the bird and I get this sense prompting, could we say God said that I'm just like, I need to read that text. And so, because I knew my memory of that text, like you were saying, Ben, like is not as clear, you know? as what that text actually says. So I look at the text and the part of the text that I, I wasn't thinking of was the last line. Are you not of more value than they? And so I was like, I was like, and so right then I look it up, I read that. Are you not of more value than they? And I'm like, I'm like, yeah, I am. And so, and so, but then dude, I had my headphones in, but I had paused what I was listening to for like the last five minutes. And I was just kind of, it was all silent. And right when, <laughs> right when, uh, right when I read that, I've, you're not more valuable there. I, I hear ding <laughs> in my headphones because a text came in right at that moment. And it was my buddy, my buddy, Josh, who's a pastor up in Longview. And he goes, how you doing, man? Just checking uh, in on, on you uh, with all your studying and writing. Miss you. We need to connect. Love you, bro. And, um, and Josh is a dude that, you know, he's a good friend of mine and, and he definitely has the gift of encouragement, you know? And, um, and so dude, all this happened at once. And I'm thinking about the weight of this junk I got to get done and this things and kind of discouraged in some ways. And then it's like, that scripture comes to mind. I see the bird. It prompts me there. I look into the end of it. I get this text from Josh and then we kind of go back and forth on it. And, um, and I kind of told him that story about the bird and everything. And, and, you know, he was encouraging me and praying for me and everything. But, but, uh, dude, I heard from the Lord this morning. Like I could definitively say that. Like I, I can tell you God said, and I can read Matthew six twenty six. I can, I mean, I even get emotional here and to be the church podcast tradition every six months or so. Um, that, um, yeah, three months, uh, <laughs> weeks, <security>. shut <laughs> your face. Um, but, but I'm just saying, dude, that like, that is what we're talking about. That is hearing from the Lord. And I'm not saying that like, that makes any, but we, every Christian knows that every Christian knows what that is. You know what I'm saying? That because by definition of you being a Christian, you have heard Christ. Like he has spoken, he has called your name. You have responded in faith, which is a gift from him. And, and so that is, that is that 
and I think the more, as you said, Tyler, the more we're in scripture, the more we're, um, we're doing that. It's not that, I mean, I had just read three chapters of scripture and was praying and journaling for that time in the morning. And at the end of that, those, I was discouraged and I wasn't like, okay, now I'm going to read Matthew six. It was just, but it was like, it was just the, the daily disciplines over the years of, and hiding God's word in your heart. And then you see a bird and it triggers something and you're not even realizing in the moment that you were really tempted to believe the lies of the enemy related to your, uh, the Lord knowing you, seeing you, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So, anyway. Yeah, and that's happened to me as recent yeah. of as uh, the last couple of months, uh, and I'm not going to tell the story here, but very similar situation. Why, because you don't want to cry? I, cr- I cried plenty when it happened. Right. Um, but no, and I affirm that. I think that God is active in that way. Um, but the thing about what you just told us was there's not like a real subjective sense to it. Sure. You know what I mean? There's the objective word of God. There's a friend who's coming in and reminding you of truth. Yeah. I, and and yes. what, how you knew that about the bird was because of what God had already revealed in his yeah. word. And so the spirit was using the word. So I think that's my main thing is I think scripture is sufficient, mm. but God takes that. The word is living and active. You have the spirit of God. Other people around you have the spirit of God and he does communicate through all those means, but it's all, it's all together. It's not this subjective, like God told me this random thing. And so I'm going to make this decision. There's like no scripture, no people of God, no prayer. It's just like that to yeah. me is where I, I my, my, uh, my red flags kind of go up a little bit. Yeah. And I think that's great, dude, because I, in my own life and growing up in a more Pentecostal type environment, 25 years ago or so, I might've seen that bird. And then, and then, um, like maybe in my teen years, I might've seen that bird and then, and then kind of like thought something and maybe even attributed phraseology or specific wording to God that wasn't actually God, but was just me in my own mind thinking something and then with whatever theology or whatever recent this I'd heard or whatever else, uh, uh, ascribing that to God when it wasn't really God. My, my inclination as I've grown in this over the years was I need to actually read that text because it, Matthew six twenty six. And as I read Matthew six twenty six, there were parts of it that I had forgotten that were then called back to mind. And it really was the voice of God, mm-hmm. um, comforting, strengthening, mm-hmm. uh, assuring, you know, mm-hmm. everything else. So mm-hmm. anyway, yeah. Yeah. Well, that was a, a really good conversation. And um, if I do say so myself, and uh, <laughs> we, we wouldn't have had that conversation had a listener not uh, responded to a previous uh, podcast and asked more questions about that. You can do that as well. Podcast at to be the church.com uh, would be the best place to do that. You can also join us on social media at to be the church um, or on YouTube. Just search the to be the church podcast. You can watch the podcast there. Leave your questions in the comments. All right, have a great week.